uh, the challenge for the Prime Minister is not to have a pleasant meeting. The challenge is to reinforce the national security requirements for Israel and to uh, present the president the reality of the Middle East, which is very, very different from the view coming out of the Washington DC establishment, including the key advisors of the president, most notably the difference between the track record of Iran on the one hand and the Palestinians uh, at the same time, uh, the difference between that and the future track record which the administration dwells on. It's much more pleasant to dwell on speculations about positive behavior in the future. It's much more frustrating but much more realistic to base your assessment on the actual track record of both the Iranians and the Palestinians. And with regards to Iran, Israel has taken uh, this stance and this position of uh, really uh, blowing the whistle and, and, and telling the Americans and other parties uh, that, that Iran will not better its ways. But can Israel do anything at this point uh, in order to uh, prevent a return to an agreement, not the former agreement, but a revised agreement with Iran? Well, it's, it's the duty, it's incumbent upon uh, the Prime Minister and Israel as a whole to portray again the Iranian reality as it is. Namely, uh, the Iranians, the Ayatollahs of Iran are not driven by hope. They are not driven by enhanced standard of living. They are driven by a fanatic, imperialistic uh, design, which in fact has characterized uh, the region as far as Arabs are concerned for the last 1400 years. And that's uh, uh, the desire, the goal to rule the Gulf, the Middle East and the whole uh, world. Uh, the Iranian uh, regime today from day one when they took over through the revolution of 1978-79, they have dwelled upon very, very specific policy, that of terrorism, that of uh, subversion, and that of uh, fueling civil wars in Yemen, in Iraq, in Syria, and Lebanon. The question, though, is whether Israel can actually uh, make a difference in this equation. It has taken the stance, but at the moment, negotiations have been going on for many months. There is a new government in Iran. They might not be willing. To, to come to an agreement. But as far as the West is concerned, is Israel and, and uh, uh, its accusations on Iran and, and the warnings uh, that it voices, uh, does it make a difference? Could it make a difference at this oh, point? Absolutely. You go back to uh, 2015 when the agreement was signed. President Obama wanted to ratify it. The Senate did not want to ratify it. Uh, today, we also have uh, opposing uh, senators to uh, even negotiation with Iran. It's the uh, role of Israel to provide those senators with more and more data on the reality of Iran and on the futility of the assumption that the Ayatollahs of Iran could be coaxed through a very generous uh, package of uh, financial assistance they could be coaxed to stray away from their strategic goal they could be coaxed into uh, peaceful coexistence with the Arab Sunni regimes power sharing with Sunni Arab regimes all those assumptions which produced the JCPOA of 2015 have absolutely nothing to do with Iran or in the Middle East. The only thing that they have done is provide tailwind to the Ayatollah's very extreme megalomaniacal goal. What do you think uh, would be considered as an achievement that uh, Bennett could come uh, back with from Washington on this trip? 
Well, it seems to me that notwithstanding the obvious disagreements between the administration in Washington and uh, Israel as a whole on the Iranian issue as well as on the Palestinian issue, there is much more important interest for the U.S. and this is confronting the rising uh, uh, wave of Islamic terrorism, confronting certain negative options as far or developments as far as the Ayatollahs are concerned. And as the U.S. Was, withdraws its military presence in the Middle East, it looks for an entity in the Middle East which would fill in the void once they evacuate the Middle East. There's only one entity in the Middle East that could fill that void, that could stabilize the Middle East, could support all pro-U.S. Uh, Arab regimes, and that's uh, Israel. The test will be, okay. is strategic cooperation bolstered or not? Sad, sadly, our time is up, but thank you very much.